Here we go, it's Baldwin and Chartiers Valley, the final game of the Baldwin tip-off tournament here at Baldwin High School. Girls won earlier against Thomas Jefferson, a nail-biting game that the Fighting Islanders were able to pull out a victory in. And now it's the prime time matchup we've all been waiting for. Fourth game of this tip-off tournament, the final one between Baldwin and the Chartiers Valley Colts. What are the keys to the game, Tyler, on both sides for a victory? Try to have these two teams improve the 2-0. For Chargers Valley, it's going to be getting to an offensive rhythm early. We saw it yesterday. Altoona really had no rhythm offensively. They struggled, and they got to hit the boards hard. Baldwin rebounds in numbers. They got to have guys on the glass to clean up. For Baldwin, it's got to be start fast and find their scores early. If they can do that, they can really start to pull away from Chargers Valley early like we saw yesterday. Our Sharp Insurance starting lineups as they go. First for visiting Chartiers Valley entering today at 1-0. A 61-59 victory against the Peters Township Indians last night. Jaden Davis, the junior 5'10 guard. Jackson Specht, Danny Slizik, Julian Semplis, and TJ Kubasek for head coach Brandon Sensor. For the Baldwin Fighting Highlanders as they go, Caden Cherico, the junior guard at 6'1". Nate Richards moves to shooting guard with Nate Wessling and Max Marzina, the sophomore point guard, wearing number 12 for his sophomore season. And Matt Shank, the junior 6'4 forward, will jump it up and round out the starting five, thanks to Sharp Insurance, on the Baldwin Fighting Highlander starting lineup. Exciting matchup, ready for this one. It's one that started off the season last couple of years, and it's always one that we keep an eye on and circle on the calendar when we see it at the start of every year. This was a loss against Chartiers Valley for Baldwin to begin the season last year. It came in heartbreaking fashion. Close game as a lot of these games tend to be for the Baldwin boys basketball program. So many losses by one possession last year. We're going to try to turn the tide and make it different this year. Matt Shank jumps it up and Kubasek wins the tip back to Jaden Davis. And we're underway. Chartiers Valley and it's blue jerseys, white numbers, and red trim. Baldwin, white jerseys, purple numbers, purple trim. Davis, lost his footing, he's guarded by Max Marzina. Big matchup for Max, the sophomore, guarding Davis, one of the top scorers in the entire Whippeal. Slizik with the basketball, drives and kicks it out. Specht fakes on a three and now swings it. Three pointer up, long shot, Kubasek can't finish. Offensive rebound down low and a foul is called. Driving to the basket, Danny Slizik will go to the free throw line. Yeah, and that right there on the first possession, Baldwin's has to get the rebound off that first shot there. A long offensive possession for the Colts, and now they get rewarded by going to the free throw line. Foul goes on Max Shank, his first. It says Danny Slizik to the free throw line, makes the first shot. Second shot also up and good. So Chartiers Valley takes a two to nothing advantage. Baldwin's first offensive possession in the hands of Max Marzina. Now Caden Cherico right to the basket. Cherico dumps it off Matt Shank but an offensive foul is called on Caden Cherico. Driving to the basket, TJ Kubasek helped to draw it. First foul on Caden. Yeah, you can see it right here. Kubasek just getting over, able to draw the charge as Cherico jumps right into him. Jaden Davis with the basketball, the leading scorer for Chargers Valley last year, averaged 24 points per game to the corner. Wide open shot, passed up on by Specht. He drives to the basket and gets the friendly roll. Jackson Specht able to score 4 0, and Marzina's pass is deflected away by Jaden Davis. Not much going for Baldwin so far. No, and Chargers Valley just very lively from the tip. Just look like they've come into this kind of ready. Baldwin needs to find a way to pick up the energy here quickly. Nate Richards brings it up. Richards with Nate Wessling, Matt Shank, Max Morzina, Kid, and Cherico. Shank traveled. He's trying to get it to Max. Not able to do so, though, as Matt Shank just slid his foot too much. Gives it back to Chartiers Valley. Davis with it. Get the screen from Kubasek and now gets it back. Pass back and forth with Semplis and he nails a three. Julian Semplis 
cashes in, seven nothing. Early lead for Short Tears Valley. Nate Wessling hits the floor, now gets it back. Not a great start at all for Baldwin. No, they gotta find rhythm fast here. This is gonna get out of hand quick. Not even a shot attempt up, and a foul is called as Wessling was driving to the basket. An eye-opening start for Baldwin. The exact opposite of what you'd wanna see. Let's send it now to Ethan. Thanks, Austin, and not the start that Baldwin wanted, but the Fighting Hounders, they've got to keep pushing. Coach Ackerman has been pleading to his team, look, we have to stop the turnovers and we have to score quick. Not the quick start, but we'll see what happens here in this first half. Austin, back to you. And Brandon Sensor has got to be very happy with what he's seen from his Short Tears Valley team. Swung on over, Max Marzina to the corner. Caden Cherica will try a three right side of the floor. That one's off the mark. Rebound fought for by Danny Slizik. Baldwin also a team that's not going to have the height advantage on really anybody this year. Rebounding might become a little bit of a challenge. No more Christian Forgus, the 6'5 forward, who helped out Baldwin last year, coming back from the team after not playing his junior year. Slizik with it, swings it around Kubasek. Jaden Davis cannot handle it, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, Kubasek, I think, was going for a bounce pass to Davis under the defender's arm, and, and said Davis just coming right at him went off of his shin. Max Marzino with it. If you're Baldwin, don't panic. Get the ball into the bottom of the hoop and another foul is called. This one on Davis. Yeah, I think what really helps Char Valley is the fact that last night they were in a nail biter to start off the season against a very good Peters Township team, winning that game on the road 61-59. Baldwin getting it done in pretty easy fashion against an Altoona team that is nowhere near the caliber of this Char Valley team. Nate Wessling gets it in. Max Marzina sets it up. Max, the sophomore guard of the senior. Nate Richards, now Kaden Cherico in the corner. Kaden drives, had a lane, now swings it out. Richards, Max Marzina will try a three, left side. That's good, Max Marzina cashes in. Triple up and good, Baldwin's on the board. Looking to push though, Kubasek has it. Matt Shank not wanting to pick up another foul, he already has one. Kubasek stretches it back out to the three point arc and now Chartier's Valley goes with Semplis driving. Two minutes gone by first quarter. Seven to three, Chartier's Valley. Semplis drives to the basket. Floater, too strong. Rebound Baldwin. Matt Shank gives it to Richards. Baldwin looks to push. Richards with Max Marzina. Richards dribbles into a three. Off the back of the rim. Long rebound. Richards fights for it. And a jump ball is called. Arrow will stay with the Fighting Islanders. Yeah, that's a good job by Richards. Misses the three. Commits to going in and getting a, a rebound for Baldwin. Able to hold the ball and get a jump ball in the way of the Fighting Hunters. Max Marzina will throw it in, right into Matt Shank and back to Marzina. Sets it up to Nate Wessling. Wessling drives off the dribble, pull up jump shot, difficult shot, missed and rebound by Speck. Jackson Speck gives it over to Davis. Davis guarded by Marzina. Davis dribbles into a three, pulls up and hits it. Jaden Davis, big shot. Right in the face of Max Marzina, 10-3, Chartiers Valley. Now Wessling, Marzina. Now Caden Cherico back to Marzina, and now Nate Wessling sets it up. With it now, Matt Shank. Thank our sponsors as you see him on the screen as Nate Wessling drives to the basket and gets blocked by Kubasek. In transition now, Chartiers Valley Speck drives. Now Jaden Davis has it up top. Davis over to the corner, three-pointer, fake by Speck, he drives, loses it, and now Marzina. Max Marzina with Nate Wessling in transition. Marzina to the basket, off balance, Nate Richards gets the rebound. Dribbles into a double team, and now Caden Cherico will try a three. Left side wing, he's got it. Caden Cherico hits the three, puts up the three-point signal in the air, and now cuts it to a four-point game. Yeah, it's again, great job by Richards on the board, getting the rebound after the missed layup by Marzina. He finds the open man in Cherico, who's able to knock it down. Kubicek up top, double team now. As Nate Richards knocks it away, here's Marzina, one on one with Davis. Can he force a foul, he swings it out. Richards, Marzina, corner three, left side, off the mark, rebound, Wessling, and he will go to the free throw line. Nate Wessling grabbed it right away and tried to put it right back into the basket. Yeah, knowing that Speck was behind him and he's able to grab the board and go up and draw the foul as well. And there's a three point by Caden Cherico. Again, great pass by 
Richards understood he was double teamed. Somebody had to be open. Nate Wessling to the line. Scored 13 points a game last year. Splashes in the first. Two and a half rebounds per game as well. A couple substitutions in for Chartiers Valley as Jake Lewis comes on. Rudy Morris, number 20 as well. More size. Lewis, 6'3", sophomore forward. Or is number five. Both free throws good from Nate Wessling. Just over three minutes to go, first quarter. Baldwin's cut it to a two-point game, 10-8. Was 7-0. Baldwin's done a good job of controlling the tempo now. Semplis with it, guarded by Richards. It's a box-in-one defense from Baldwin as Max Marzina guards Jaden Davis the whole way. Switch it off now, Richards to the corner. It's worked for Baldwin right now as it goes out of bounds and goes to the Fighting Highlanders. Last touch by Davis. Yeah, right in front of us, you can see it just as Davis was falling over, the ball rolls right under his foot off of him and out of bounds, last touch by Char Valley. Nate Richards. Dribble drive. Al Marzina up top. Gets the play from Jeff Ackerman and here we go. Marzina, cross court, Cherico, Richards, Wessling. Three-pointer up and good. Splashing it in, Nate Rich, Nate Wessling on the basket. Good passing from Richards and others there. Five points now for Nate West. And it's a great find by Marzina to Cherico in the corner and then good ball movement, swinging it around. Driving to the basket, Morris kicks it and stolen away. Here's Max Marzina. Marzina guarded by Morris. Baldwin takes the lead 11 to 10. Max. Looking for an outlet and gives it over Nate Richards. Nate Wessling gets it off the call. Gonna try to operate now Richards. Richards looking back door for Wessling, not there. Marzina, last to touch it off his foot and it will be Shard Valley ball. One thirty-two to go, first quarter of play, 11-10. Baldwin out in front now. Started out as a seven or nothing Shard Valley lead. Baldwin has got the deficit, now taking the lead. Bounce pass, three point shot up, good look and splashed in. Julian Semplis, his second three now with six points in Shard Valley, ahead by two. Jaden Dutine at the scores table, set to check in. No subs from Baldwin yet as Richards pulls up at the elbow, left side. Doesn't get that one to fall. Semplis with another board. Julian Semplis. Pass over to the corner. Open man, three-pointer too strong from Slizik. Rebound cleared by Caden Cherico. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Nate Richards. Richards clears it out and goes to Cherico. Now sets it back up to Richards. Two subs now at the scorer's table. And we have a stoppage before the end of the first. Bearcat and Dutine. Richard swings it. Caden Cherico fakes on a long range three and now looks to kick it back out. Mike Baldwin decide to hold for the last possession. Richards thinking not, attacking the basket, misses it. Matt Shank on the rebound, can't finish. And a rebound goes to Morris. Morris pushing it up the floor. Three on two emerges. Fake on a three from Slizik but traveled and will give it back to Baldwin. So Dutine and Bearcat do come in. Taking a seat, Caden Cherico, as well as Nate Wessling. So the five for Baldwin, Dutine, Marzino, Gabe Barakat, Nate Richards, and Matt Shank. 17.1 to go, two point lead, Sharp Valley here in the first quarter. Marzina right by the Char Valley bench. Barakat now Richards, looking down low, Marzina. He's got it, no shot at opportunity there though. Marzina swings it around. It's Nate Richards, long shot before the horn, banks it in, and it will count. Nate Richards, before the buzzer, hits the three. The banks open on Saturday, and Baldwin takes a one-point lead, 14 to 13, as we go to the second quarter of play on the Fighting Hounders Sports Network. At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day. 
to ensure the best tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, mmm, mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. If you accept credit payments with anyone other than eServices Payment Technology, you are paying too much. At eServices Technology, we redefine convenience and security with our cutting-edge merchant payment processing. Whether you're a small business or large corporation, switch to a more accurate and efficient payment processing tool. Trust eServices for secure transactions that redefine the future of payments and can beat your current rates. Visit us at eservicestech.com. If you need insurance, you need an agency that's sharp. The Sharp Insurance Agency is an independent agency and distinguish themselves by providing face-to-face customer service and reviewing coverage to provide the best possible value for their clients. Hi, I'm Mike Sharp. Lean on my years of experience in the Pittsburgh area to find you the best insurance coverage because when insurance companies compete, you win. The Sharp Insurance Agency. Contact us today to have your personal or business insurance professionally reviewed. We begin the second quarter. Jaden Davis is shot. Foul called. And it goes on the Fighting Highlanders, Gabe Barakat. First foul on Barakat. Team's third. Sends Jaden Davis to the free throw line. Davis regarded by the Trib as the preseason player of the year. The 5'10 junior guard averaged 25 points per game last season. And he makes the first free throw. Tied it up at 14. Just for the chance to make it 15 and does. Five points for Davis. Here in the second quarter of play, Marzina gets it up to Shanks. Wide open, Jaden Dutine, Dutine one, dribble and the layup. First points of the season for Jaden Dutine. A lot of dribbling from Semplis, guarded by Max Marzina. The 12s guarding each other. Slizik and now Morris looking for Davis, swings it back out. Semplis, dribble drive inside the paint, now back out. It looks like Lewis traveled and he did. Jake Lewis into the game. Traveled and gives it back to Baldwin. Austin Bechtel, Tyler Zeman, Ethan Coolahan here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Max Marzina tipped it to himself a couple of times. He gives it to Bearcat. And a timeout called by Baldwin. So to avoid a potential turnover there, Marzina not able to hold it for that long. Baldwin takes a timeout. 7.04 to go, second quarter, 16-15 Baldwin. Yeah, and you can see the open Jane Dutine layup again. Great job by Baldwin breaking that press that Chargers Valley has come out, tested the Fighting Highlanders with, and Dutine's rewarded on the other end with an easy layup. Nate Westling with five points, Max Marzina with three. We've had five different scorers for Baldwin. The only starter that has not scored is Matt Shank. Four different scorers for Chartiers Valley. All starters, Kubasek, the only one that has not tallied a point yet. It's an exciting game so far as we expected to see. Not too many surprises yet. Chartiers Valley projected by the trip to finish third in 5A power rankings at the moment in the preseason power rankings. So good test for Baldwin in game one. Max Marzina open. We'll try a three left side. Splashes it in. Triple for Max Marzina. Six points. Both behind the arc. Both shots he's converted on have been long balls for the sophomore guard. Up top, Rudy Morris has an open three and he drains it. First points for Morris. Richards, open man, Marzina, fakes on a three. Max drives to the basket, puts it up and in. Max Marzina, eight points. The sophomore making a statement in his second varsity start. Davis, all the way to the basket, bounce pass. Three-pointer up, off the mark. Couldn't get it to go, Slizik shot. And now Marzina pushes. 
Max Richards fakes on a three. Great fake. Richards to the basket. Will go to the free throw line and will attempt to. He just couldn't get that basket to fall there at the rim. Baldwin's come out, had a lot of open three looks, and it's back to back possessions where they get the Colts to bite on a three point attempt and drive to the basket. Nate Richards makes the first free throw. Caden Cherico comes back in. Nate Wessling will check in for Richards if Richards is able to convert on the free throw. Matt Shank comes off. Nate Richards has worked so hard on free throws mm -hmm. in the offseason to be able to improve on that somewhere. He struggled last year and drains both of them. Great to see for Nate. Yeah, and for the Fighting Highlanders, I'm, they have perimeter shooters, and they know it. And that's the thing for the Fighting Highlanders is you can't live and die by the three. Ackerman still wants to see them attack the basket, and it's good that they're getting back to it. They're on back-to-back -back possession. Julius Best with the basketball, number two, and swings it out to Morris. Best freshly into the game. Three-pointer up from Semplis to Strong. Rebound, Nate Wesley. Nate up the floor. Gets past his defender, kicks it out. Caden Jericho will try a corner three left side. That one misses. Dutine battles for the rebound and tips it out to Marzina. Max steps back and gives it over to Nate Wessling. Fakes on the three. Dribble move, creates space, and drains it. Nate Wessling with a strong shot. 25-18 Baldwin. Jaden Davis all the way to the basket. Puts it up and in, plus the foul. Good take from Davis to score. Creates space. His seventh point will try to make it eight at the line. Foul goes on Jaden Dutine. That's his first. Davis to the free throw line. And able to hit. Davis last year, 78% from the charity stripe. 25-21. Ball one in front. Gabe Barricade up the floor. Gabe looks for an outlet and gets it to Marzina. Marzina to the hoop. Has an open man, Cherico, but a foul called before the pass. And it goes on to Julius Best. His first. Inbounds to Wessling. And in. Nate Wessling on the nifty play Baldwin likes to do pretty often. Throw it in off the inbound. Catch and shoot right in the middle of the floor. Rudy Morris shot misses. Offensive rebound though kicks out to Best. Swings it cross court. Semplis, long range shot, rattles off. Rebound, TJ Kubasek and in. Kubasek just using his height to his advantage. 6-2 Kubasek. And it's a smaller Baldwin team as Matt Shank will go to the scores table to check in. Wesling, now Max Marzina looking for an outlet and goes to Jaden Dutine. Dutine can't hold on to it and turns it over. Rudy Morris up the floor, looking to push the tempo. Semplis swings it to the corner, another open man. That's Kubasek, his three-pointer way off the mark. Air balled into the hands of Caden Cherico. Dutine to Nate Wessling. Nate, step back, jumper, got it, splashing it in. Nate Wessling, 11 points, he's feeling it today. He is, that's three great back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shots by Wessling. This is something that Baldwin needs so critically. Nate Wessling to step up and score as Jaden Dutine blocks the Jaden Davis shot. Wessling through defenders. Foul line jumper, got it. Nate Wessling, everything's falling today. 13 points for the junior guard. 31-23, ball went in front. Yeah, how about it? Finished the day yesterday with 15, already up to 13 for him in the first half. This is the potential we know Nate Wessling has. Be able to score the ball as well as his brother James, if not better at times. If that one's thrown away by Semplis. Nate Wessling has been strong, 13 points, including eight in the second quarter, creating all different types of ways. I mean, that's just great. Gets the defender to bite twice and then has a good shot up and off the inbound right there. Stolen away by Chartier's Valley. As we take a look at some of the highlights from Nate Wessling, Jaden Davis with the basketball. 
foul goes on Gabe Barakat. That's his second as the freshman Evan Golvash subs into the game. Number 20. Golvash is the one that lost the handle of it. And now Nate Richards comes back on to spell Jaden Dutine. So the five for Baldwin, Richards, Wessling, Golvash, Shank, Barakat. Three-pointer up from Kubasek off the back of the rim. Semplis skies up for the rebound and controls. 3.16 to go, second quarter. Ball went up by eight. Semplis drives, kicks it to the corner. Now Rudy Morris. Semplis gets by Matt Shank, kicks it out. Semplis with it, puts it up. It looks like the foul will be on the floor as Kubasek sent it out to Semplis. It goes on Nate Richards. First on Richards. Davis couldn't handle it. Ball goes out of bounds and will be ball and basketball. Barricade into Richards. Back to Barricade as Chartier's Valley presses. Richards sets it up. Richards with Golvash, Barricade, Shank, as well as Wessling. And a timeout called by Baldwin. It's a 30 second timeout. 31 23, 244 to go, second quarter here on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. After being sidelined with a shoulder injury, two minutes in the box isn't so bad. Now get back out there. With AHN Sports Medicine, you're ready for what's next. Your body's rehabbed and recovered. Your legs primed to outski your defender. Your technical skills perfected. And just like that, you're back. Oh yeah, you're back. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Back here on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. It's an eight point lead for Baldwin. Baldwin looking to try to get it in right away, and why not? As Chartier's Valley wasn't ready. And now everybody's set. We're going to go back door. There's Golvash. He finishes. Evan Golvash converts on the pass from Nate Richards. Good feed, and Golvash able to score. The freshman scored his first varsity points yesterday in the third quarter. Rudy Morris is fouled by Richards. Jeff Ackerman not happy with it and said, why? Just put your hands up and go straight up. Don't draw that foul. Nate Richards now with two. Yeah, and there's Evan Golvash attacking the basket, the freshman. He had a great showing yesterday in the, the minutes he played and big minutes for him here in, in an early game against a very good Chargers Valley team. Rudy Morris's first free throw was missed. First missed free throw by Chargers Valley. Here's a 10 point game, 33-23. Morris, a second shot also not able to convert on. Two missed free throws. Richards gets a screen from Matt Shank. Not able to roll off of it as Richards. Dribble drive move, looks for an outlet. He's got Golvash. Evan Golvash, the freshman, bright pink shoes, kicks it out. Nate Richards sets it up, guarded by Jaden Davis. Richards swings it, Barakat. Lost the ball. Rudy Morris knocks it away and a foul is called. Looks like they might get Davis on this one. On a push from behind. That is the case and it's the second foul on Jaden Davis. Third team foul in the quarter on Chartier's Valley as no longer seven fouls in the half. No longer double bonus with 10 fouls. It's different now. Just like how girls high school basketball is. Five fouls in the quarter and we're shooting. Nate Wessling to the basket. Tried to pass it off to Barakat. Barakat corrals and sends it over to Richards. Richards, head fake to the basket. High off glass and we'll go to the line. Nate Richards will go to the free throw line after the foul on Julian Semplis. That's his second foul. Yeah, you can see there Semplis just getting over there late. And again, Baldwin going back to what they were so successful at yesterday, attacking the basket and getting to the free throw line. First free throw good for Nate Richards. Nate three of three on the day. And now four of four. 
35 to 23. Richards jumped in that one to try to force the Aaron shot from Speck, and it looks like it worked. This ball was able to corral now and go the other way. Nate Wessling backs it up. Sets up the play. Looking for Goldvash down well. They found him. Goldvash high off glass, too strong. Fight for the rebound goes to Specht and now looking to push. Best. Julian Best kicks it over to Kubisek. Now back up top, swinging around Semplis. Guarded by Gabe Barakat. Semplis drives, puts up a wild shot. Barakat gets the board. Under a minute to go in the half. 35-23, ball went out in front. Richards has a lane, kicks it out. Goldvash. Now Wessling, crossover dribble on Davis, who guards him out by the perimeter. Now Richards sets it up. Max Marzina at the scorer's table to sub back in if there is a dead ball. Baldwin might hold for the final shot. Richards, though, attacks, has the lane. Why not take it and score? <laughs> Nate Richards now nine points. Yeah, when you talk about Nate Richards, you talk about the dribbling and handles right there, and that's what creates the opportunity for the Islanders. And Chartier's Valley called for the offensive foul. That will send it in Baldwin's direction for another possession. And it goes on Jackson Speck, his second. Bearcat will throw it in, 21.6. Still to go. Richards looking back door, nothing there. Knocked away by Semplis, and last touched by Chartier's Valley, 10.4 remaining. Wessling gets it in to Max Marzina. Marzina with seven seconds. Gets a high screen from Matt Shank. Marzina, so the basket, turn around, tough shot, rattles out Matt Shank. Can't get it to go on the second chance effort. And the half comes to an end. An explosive half. Second quarter from Baldwin, 37 to 23. Baldwin took off and took flight in the second quarter of play. Fighting Highlanders lead it by 14. Stay tuned, Nate Richards is our senior spotlight interview here on the Fighting Highlanders Sports Network. Back in a moment, Baldwin leading 37-23. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same-day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or at DeanHonda.com. Trump Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services including camera inspection and dye testing. Trump Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. It's year three of Baldwin basketball coverage here on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. I'm Austin Bechtold. Every year we get a chance to talk to our Baldwin graduating seniors this year in the class of 2024 about their basketball journey here as a Fighting Highlander and also what comes next once they depart Baldwin.
Hi everyone and welcome into our Senior Spotlight Series talking to all the boys basketball seniors in the class of 2024. I'm Austin Bechtold, pleased to be joined alongside Nate Richards, Thanks shooting guard Nate yep. Richards this year. Yes sir. What's it like making that transition this year compared to the previous years? Um, in the beginning, it was kind of rough for me because, you know, I'm always so used to just bringing the ball up the court, you know, getting looking up for the open man. But uh, I need to do a little more scoring this year, so they bumped me to the two. So I'm getting kind of used to it now, you know, looking forward to first game, seeing how it goes. So overall, what was your basketball upbringing? I know you come from a huge basketball yeah. family. So um, I've always been around basketball since I was a little kid. So like my mom, she coached. I would go to her games, practices everywhere. Um, even my cousins, like my uncle, so it's always been around me. I was just always around it. Yeah, and how about your older brothers as well, factoring yeah. into that? Yeah, yeah. My brother, I take some of his moves till this day that he used in high school. So, yeah, it played a big part in my game today. Did you play any other sports growing up? Um, I played a little bit of baseball. That's about it. Do you think baseball in any way helped out in basketball? Uh, definitely with speed, for sure. Like, yeah, for speed. Now, at least for you, compared to a lot of other guards that we see in the whip your dribbling is a strong, yeah. fan, probably one of the best dribblers in the entire Whitfield. Yeah, I appreciate that. What is it like for you just going through the motions of getting ready to go for a game and also how have you crafted those dribbling moves? Um, honestly, it's just, you know, watching a lot of film, uh, NBA players, college players, and picking up what they do, working on it in the gym. I had countless hours of dribbling every day, um, with a, whether it's with a regular basketball, weighted basketball, anything. I'm always working on my handle. What has your basketball journey been like to get to this point senior year? I mean, freshman year, it was rough. We had the COVID. Uh, I started the first two games, wasn't ready at all probably, but uh, two rough games against TJ and Lebo because our point guard was sick. Um, but it made, those games made me who, what I am today, so it made me uh, tougher, stronger, everything like that. What are you most looking forward to in your senior year? Uh, winning games, that's about it. What's been some of the best memories that you've had to this point? Anything with the team, man, locker room, practices, we always find a way to make it fun. So anything with the team. So you're going to be relied upon as a bigger scorer this year, taking on a lot more opportunities to be able to shoot the rock. How excited are you for that? Oh, I'm excited, man. I worked on my shot a lot this summer, so I'm looking forward to the opportunity. What do you think was the biggest part of your game that you needed to improve on? What are your biggest strengths as well? Strengths, definitely dribbling. Um, I was work, working on my shooting a little bit and needed a little tweaking to it, So, and I'm feeling really good about that. Um, yeah, biggest weakness, basically just uh, I want to be more aggressive this year, uh, attacking the rim, all that, so trying to do it all. And you have some new ink as well on yeah. your left shoulder, yep. a basketball tattoo. Yes, sir. Got that uh, this summer. So what went into getting that and also um, with your number on it as well? Yeah, so num three's uh, been my number, favorite number for a long time. Uh, street I grew up on, High Grove, uh, it's just the meaning to me, where I came from, where I grew up, where it all started. Pretty sweet. Yeah. What type of legacy do you want to leave on this program once you graduate? I just want to put a section up on that banner, man. 2024, it's 23. Some, it's something we've been talking about yeah. really for so long, so long. at least since yeah. we've been covering yeah, basketball. Yeah, it's a big here. goal of mine. I, I want to get that this year for sure. What is going to be the biggest part of your game, but overall for the team to be able to accomplish that goal? Um, honestly, just working together, being a team. We're all one. It's not all. It's a team sport, you know, working together. So if we can work all together, uh, communicate together, it's all, all about teamwork. So. I'm looking forward to playing talking, with this team. Talking to Nate Richards. So, Nate, overall for you, with James Lessling no longer here, a lot of seniors graduating from last year, including James, yeah. a 1,000-point score. What is the dynamic of this year's team going to be like with Nate Lessling as well as Matt Shank is back? A couple of different starters is, or is back as well yeah. and Kid and Cherico factoring. Yeah, um, we're kind of smaller this year, so um, we all can kind of play uh, each spot, like me, Nate, and uh, Max. We, we all interchange one, two, and three. So uh, we can guard everywhere. Uh, you know, attack anyone at any position. So it's looking good for us. I could just tell you love basketball. Oh, yeah, love it. What's the best part about just coming to the gym? Um, honestly, just getting those shots up, like just seeing the ball go in the hoop. It's like nothing. It takes your mind off away from everything. There's nothing better than just shooting a basketball. What do you think the biggest lessons are that you've learned in the last couple of years to get to the senior year and also from a leadership perspective? Um, discipline. Um, and it's honestly just like a big learning experience. You can't get down on yourself. So. I mean, every, you got to look at everything as a learning experience. No matter what it is, you just can't get upset with yourself. So it's just been a big building point for me up to this point. What's a message that you'd like to give to your family and friends that have been so involved um, with you in this program? Thank you for everything. They, they've been there every second, uh, getting me whatever I want for basketball, doing whatever I need to get in the gym. So I appreciate that. Appreciate your time. Good luck this year. Appreciate it. Nate Richards, Baldwin Basketball here in our Senior Spotlight Series.
The Baldwin Whitehall School District is seeking applicants for school bus drivers, school bus attendants, and school van drivers. Successful applicants will receive on the job training to secure the appropriate school bus driver's license. Candidates must be able to secure clearances prior to hire. For more information, please contact Dr. Rachel Sprouse at 412 885 6608 or via email mailed to rsprouse at bwschools.net. At Mm Mmm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mm Mmm Mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. If you accept credit payments with anyone other than eServices Payment Technology, you are paying too much. At eServices Technology, we redefine convenience and security with our cutting-edge merchant payment processing. Whether you're a small business or large corporation, switch to a more accurate and efficient payment processing tool. Trust eServices for secure transactions that redefine the future of payments and can beat your current rates. Visit us at eServicesTech.com. Back here on the Fighting Islander Sports Network, 37 to 23, the score. Baldwin out in front. And that was a second quarter that Baldwin pretty much handled from the start and really did a great job of controlling the tempo. Yeah, I think the way Chargers Valley came out was a little bit worrisome. They came out really strong. Baldwin wasn't really ready for it. They went on a 7-0 run, and then after that, the Highlanders just picked it up. The three started the roll. They started to attack the basket, and you can see here on the replays, it was really going Baldwin's way offensively, and it was because they were getting good looks. On the other side of the floor, Chargers Valley, they've had good looks. They've been attacking the basket. Baldwin's just had some good defensive possessions, and it's been some things that Chargers Valley has done to themselves, causing turnovers, offensive fouls, giving possession back to the Fighting Highlanders. That has hurt the rhythm of the Colts in the first half. I mean, you look at it, 23 points from Baldwin in the second quarter. I mean, that's the big difference right now compared to the Chargers Valley's only 10 points in the second quarter. It was a 14-13 Baldwin lead after the end of the first quarter. And things dramatically changing after that. Only 10 points for Char, Vera, for Char Valley compared to 23 in that second quarter for the Fighting Highlanders. See if that can continue and if Baldwin can keep up the success as we send it now to Ethan Coolhand for more. Thanks, Austin. A great first half as the Fighting Highlanders have a 14 point lead. And something that Ackerman has been saying at halftime was look, we're doing a great job stopping Jane Davis, but he's always hurt us in the second half. We have to find a way to continue to slow him down, body him up, play aggressive defense, and then for Baldwin. Get, keep getting Nate Richards going. He is the star of this team, the senior leader. They can continue, if they can continue to do that, I can see Baldwin run away with this game in the second half. Austin, awesome. It's possible. You. Thank you, Ethan. But you know, if you watch as much basketball, Baldwin basketball as we have, a lot of close games. Ever guaranteed. I don't think it's ever guaranteed. No. no. Yeah, so. I think that the he makes a point, though. They've kept him quiet, Davis, in the first half. Only eight points. Last night had 29 led the team in the what was the eventual comeback win against Peters Township. They're going to need a, a big half from Davis, but also the crew around Davis has got to continue to give some point productions like Semplice, like Morris. Wesling throws it in right in front of us and goes to Max Morzina. And I think we have a clock malfunction. Should be 7.57 on the clock. Didn't seem like it started on time. So they take a couple extra seconds off the clock and we'll do it again on the inbound. So the five for Baldwin, Nate Wessling, Max Marzina, Caden Cherico, Matt Shank, and Nate Richards. Starting five out there. Bounce pass to Cherico. Now Nate Wessling. Nate gives it over to Richards. They have Cherico at the block, couldn't find him. Nate Wessling over to Max Marzina in the corner, trying to find Shank. And a foul called. They're going to get Julian Semplis on the foul. That's his third. The arm bar on Matt Shank. Back.
Bounce pass, Shank, right side block. Couple of dribbles, puts it up. Shank can't get it to go. Tipped around, Morzina though. Can't get it on the second chance. Morzina, another effort at it, and he's got it. Max Morzina in double figures now with 10. Got his own miss. Put it back up and in, 39-23. Change ends of the floor. Short Tears Valley now attacking the left side basket. Jaden Davis guarded by Nate Richards in the box and one, stolen away by Marzina. Trying to get a cross court pass out there, Marzina read it well. Max looking back door, Nate Wessling, double teamed, Wessling out to Richards. Nate Richards, turn around, keeps his pivot foot and goes to Marzina, who has a lane left side, turn around shot, off the glass, can't finish. Jericho though, an offensive foul as he grabbed the ball and was over the back on the rebound. Caden picks up his second. First team foul for Baldwin here in the third quarter. Slizik traveled, moved his foot before dribbling the basketball and turns it over. The offense has just not been smooth for Shark Valley tonight. No, and and I think they're, we're going to see a change here really at who's running the point. I, Davis gave the ball up to Morris. Davis in the first half, he was a lot better whenever he wasn't bringing the ball forward for the Colts coming off of screens, moving around, and then eventually getting it later in the offensive possession. Yeah, it really hasn't been there today, this an afternoon game that started middle of the day after the girls basketball team won against TJ earlier. And Jericho traveled as well. He moved his feet too early, and Jeff Ackerman not happy about that one. See on the look on his face, just a couple of travels and last few possessions on either side. Not the cleanest game today. No, nah, at least to, to open the second half, not for both sides. And that we'll see who, which offense can kind of get in its groove here the quickest. Semplis inside has a lane off the front of the rim, and the rebound goes to Matt Shank. Shank up the four, Marzina. Marzina in transition with contact there, finishes. Max Marzina is starting to mature into one of the best players on this Fighting Highlanders team as Jaden Davis's three doesn't go, and now in transition we move again. Nate Wessling with Matt Shank. Shank's got it, too strong. Richards tries to follow, but he can't hit. Fight for it, results in a jump ball, and we'll go to Shark Valley. I want to thank our sponsors, AHN, mm Pizza, Ease Services Technology, Moonlit Burgers, as well as many others that have chosen to be a part of our broadcasting team this year. As Davis is able to corral it. Dean Honda, Sharp Insurance, Shop Plumbing, and Loay Enterprises. So Jaden Davis with it, drives, blocked by Wessling. And an offensive foul called on Davis. Take another look at the Matt Shank miss. Tipped around, follow, and Marzina, after his own miss, able to get it back. So Davis now has three fouls. Marzina's pass almost stolen away by Davis, but it's in the hands of Cherico. Cherico, wide open Matt Shank layup on the right side. And First points for Matt Shank. And that's great vision there by Cherico, keeping his eyes down the court. Rudy Morris to the hoop. He scores off the window. Richards quickly up the floor. Has Matt Shank again at the block. Scores plus the foul. Count it. And Matt Shank will go to the line. A 20-point lead for Baldwin. Danny Slizik picks up his first. And I mean, again, great vision there by Cherico downfield, or down the court, and then the next play, Cherico, or excuse me, Richards bounce pass, Shank does the rest at the bucket. Free throw for Matt, Shank rolls in, five points for Matt. Morris steps into a three, he drains it. Rudy Morris for three, the senior off the bench with eight points, two triples. Max Morazina brings it up and carried it, resulting in a turnover. A little surprising there, and Jeff Ackerman not happy with the call. Yeah, I think originally it looked like he, he might have been close to the line, stepped out of bounds there. Right. I don't know how much he carried it. It was called a carry, and something that's not called very often, but is seen pretty often in the game of basketball. Especially depending on what level. 
Davis swings it over. Morris, been one of the best offensive threats for Shar Valley today. Slizik looked like he might have moved his foot, but now Rudy Morris. Morris looking for Davis back door. Davis double teamed and has a push from the back. Foul call on Baldwin. Goes on Nate Wesley. Only Nate's first and the second team foul of the quarter. Foul rules by quarter now, just like girls high school basketball. No longer seven fouls for one and one. Ten for the double bonus. And a timeout called by Shar Valley as the ball was near the sideline there. Nate Richards fighting for it, trying to force a jump ball. Timeout taken by the Colts. We take another look at it on the AHN replay. 46-28, 4.21 to go here in the third quarter of play on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. After being sidelined with a shoulder injury, two minutes in the box isn't so bad. Now get back out there. With AHN Sports Medicine, you're ready for what's next. Your body's rehabbed and recovered. Your legs primed to outski your defender. Your technical skills perfected. And just like that, you're back. Oh yeah, you're back. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same-day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or at DeanHonda.com. Back after the timeout taken by Shar Valley. Danny Slizik with it. Only two points today and that was coming in the first quarter. Now Best, he backs it out, guarded by Nate Wessling. Best all the way to the basket, kicks it out. Open three, left side of the four, splashed in. Good shot from Slizik. He gets on the board here in the second half. Max Morzina helps break the press. Nate Wessling's pass is deflected and can't find Shank. Now Danny Slizik. Slizik fakes on a three, kicks it to the corner. Rudy Morris, three right side. That one misses. Davis, though, picks up the rebound, puts it up high off glass and in. Ten points now for Jaden Davis. Chartiers Valley deploying the press. Ball was not going too quick to try to break it. Cherico's pass deflected. Richards, Marzina, and they get it up. Max Marzina has Shank, but Shank can't handle it out of bounds. 3.28 to go, third quarter, 46-33. Shar Valley starting to apply the pressure. Yeah, you can feel the energy they brought out after the time out there. Baldwin, two turnovers off of passes, and Churchill's Valley starting to execute on the offensive side of the floor. Davis swings it over, Rudy Morris. Morris drives inside in the paint, swings it over. Three-point ball up from Best. Left it short, rebound. Nate Wessling trying to corral it and is able to do so. Here's Richards. Nate Richards drives. Max Marzina now with it after the outlet and taken away by Davis. Jaden Davis out in transition with Nate Wessling who has a couple of fouls, puts it up and Nate's gonna pick up his second rather. So just a second foul on Nate Wessling as Jaden Davis will go to the line. So Davis already with 10 points. Nate Wessling picks up his second. Davis is three of three at the free throw line today. We're gonna try to cut it now to 11, makes the first. 11th point for Jaden Davis. Two fifty-five to go, third quarter. Davis hits them both. Wessling inbounds to Marzina. It's Nate Wessling, Nate Richards, Max Marzina, Matt Shank, Caden Cherico, the five for Baldwin. Max backs it out. Right near the scorer's table, sets it up. Marzina drives, looks to kick it, and gets it to Richards. Not too much moving offensively from Baldwin here as Richards, though, finds a lane, pump fake, and scores. Great drive by Nate Richards. First points of the second half, now with 11. 
Davis kicks it over to the corner. Good look for Slizik. Can't get it to go, but it's the last touch by Kidd and Cherico out of bounds. Yeah, Cherico just not ready to rebound there off the missed shot. But on the other end of the floor, Richards doing his thing, going between two defenders. Davis, turnaround, good move. Can't finish, but we'll go to the line. And we'll go on Nate Richards. Richards is third. More free throws for Jaden Davis. 2.12 to go third quarter. Davis hits the first, two substitutions come in for Baldwin. Gabe Barricat as well as Jaden Dutine. Davis averaged 28 minutes per game last season. Scored about 24, 25 points a game. Attempted about five free throws a game last year. 78% and now makes another 14 points. Wesley to Dutine over the timeline. Now Matt Shank. Matt Shank pull up, jump shot, bounces off. Skying for it, Nate Richards knocked it into the hands of Chartier's Valley. Rudy Morris runs. Now Semplis. Semplis drives inside, spinning on Matt Shank, kicks it out. Danny Slizek, now Davis. Davis double teamed. Getting that box in one, long pass Slizik, now the corner, Best. Lost the handle, still a fight for it on the ground and into the hands now of Davis who pulls for three. Left side corner, left it long. Rebound by Jaden Dutine. Minute and a half to go, third quarter. Richards to Dutine. Instead of a bounce pass, it was a high pass and Dutine fouls Semplis. Jaden picks up his second. In transition, prevented what could have been an easy layup. Uh, that is the fifth team foul from Baldwin in the quarter, so it will be free throws. It's two shots now for Julian Semplis. And he makes the first. And you know what, Tyler? The two shots and not having the one and one and everything, it takes the suspense out of it a little bit, right? I, 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 bit. I enjoyed the one and one. No, I, I, I enjoyed too. It's just, uh, I think, one of those things where it keeps everything kind of consistent between both boys and girls. Nate Wesling can't get that one to fall. 48 38. Char Valley's cut the deficit to 10. like a foul inside. It's going to go on Char Valley. It will go on 12. Julian Semplis. Four fouls now on Semplis. Still deploying the press. Richards looking to try to get everybody to clear out. And able to advance over the timeline. Richards sends it over. Nate Wessling will try three near the ball. When Benton, he's got it. Nate Wessling, triple, splash down for 16 points now. First points of the second half for Nate. Davis is fouled by Jaden Dutine. Dutine not happy about it, but gave him a little bit of an arm bar. And Jaden Dutine now has three fouls. The Jadens on each other. Jaden Dutine spelled J-A-D-E-N. Jaden Davis, J-A-Y-D-E-N. They will have more free throws. Davis makes the first. Perfect at the line. Evan Goldvash comes back on for Jaden Dutine. Thirty-two point four to go, third quarter. Fifty-one thirty-nine. Fifty-one forty now. Sixteen points for Davis. His last six coming at the line. Richards to Golvash. 
Freshman Golvass sends it over to Shank. Richards lost it and does prevent it from being over the timeline. Matt Shank gets it over Wessling. Now Bearcat. Bearcat has a lane, yeah. puts it up, gets blocked. Julius Best blocks it. Skied up there to block the shot of Matt Shank. Great play from the sophomore 6 1 guard, Julius Best. A very good play. Just times it perfectly there and make sure he gets all ball. Seven seconds. Wessling with four. Nate Wessling creates space. Step back. Tough shot. Can't get it to go. Barricat though follows. And count the basket for Gabe Barricat. His first points of the game. 53 to 40. Good job by Barricat to follow and get it up just before the horn. Yeah, Morris did a good job kind of getting a fingertip onto that, but Barricat, right place, right time, and able to put it up before the buzzer. 13 point waiver ball unless we go to the fourth. At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm, mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. If you accept credit payments with anyone other than eServices Payment Technology, you are paying too much. At eServices Technology, we redefine convenience and security with our cutting-edge merchant payment processing. Whether you're a small business or large corporation, switch to a more accurate and efficient payment processing tool. Trust eServices for secure transactions that redefine the future of payments and can beat your current rates. Visit us at eServicesTech.com. We want to thank our sponsors, AHN, mm, Pizza, East Services Technology, Moonlit Burger, Sharp Insurance, Loy Athletics, Dean Honda, and Trout Plumbing for being a part of our JRM video production broadcast on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. So Nate Richards will throw it in right in front of us. Right into Max Morzina, who's guarded by Davis. Fourth quarter, final eight of regulation. Bearcat looks for an outlet, trying to get it to Marzina and does. Max has a lane, lost it off his leg and goes to Char Valley. Up the floor, Davis. Davis attacks all the way to the basket, left hand finishes. Jaden Davis now 18 points, cuts it now to 11, 53-42. Marzina to Bearcat. Bearcat looks to drive baseline, puts it up, gets fouled, and will go to the free throw line. Char Valley wanted to travel on Bearcat. Wasn't called though, and Bearcat will shoot two. Foul goes on Julius Best. That's his second. It's the first on Char Valley of the quarter. Foul is reset every quarter. Before you get to five, then it'll be two shots. As the first free throw, good from Barricat. Caden Cherico subs in for Baldwin. He replaces Matt Shank. Jericho and Barricat both at 6 1. Two of the taller players on the Baldwin roster, as well as the 6 4 Matt Shank. Both free throws were good for Barricat now with four points, as that one's knocked away and out of bounds. It'll stay with Sharp Valley, 7 21 to go in the fourth. 13 point lead for Baldwin, 55 42. Both teams at 1 0. Baldwin beat Altoona yesterday. Sharp Valley beat Peters Township in the final moments of a close one possession victory. Davis, pull up, jump shot blocked by Marzina. Now into the hands of Richards. Max has it. Looking for Richards, cutting to the basket. Nate Richards, right hand's got it. Nate Richards, strong take to the basket, now 13 points. Rudy Morris puts it up and it goes. Up and in for Rudy Morris, now double figures with 10. Marzina. To Westling. Good find to Caden Jericho, but too strong. Barricat on the finish. Barricat followed the shot. Great job to run right to the block and score. Foul called on Nate Westling. Everyone on ball went a little bit surprised there. Yeah. 
into Davis. That was the third foul on Wesling. Shot up from Slizik, doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Rudy Morris turns around and a foul called on Richards. Definitely a foul there on Nate. Yeah, and he's gotta be careful going forward. That's four for him. So Rudy Morris to the free throw line. 0 of two today. And misses the first. Free throw is very critical especially as we get into the fourth quarter. Jaden Dutin at the scorer's table set to check in for Baldwin. Morris does hit the second, now with 11 points. And Nate Richards has to come off. Jaden Dutin comes on for him, the junior guard, wearing number four. Max Marzino with it. Brings it up the floor and goes to Barricat. Right near the ball one bench. Gabe, dribble move, trying to get past Morris, and now Marzina has it again. One minute gone by in the fourth. Max got it poked away, and a foul called on Morris. Just the first foul on Morris, and it's the second team foul of the quarter. Nate Wessling will throw it in. Bounce pass to Caden Cherica, who gets double teamed and finds Dutine. Dutine has a lane, puts up the shot, and it bounces off. But we'll go to the free throw line. Two shots coming for Jaden Dutine after the call, after the foul called on Julius Best. That's his third. And it was a great find by Cherico inside, and Dutine has the awareness to just go and attack the basket with nobody around him. Dutine hits the first. Third point for Jaden. Dutine was left off the score sheet yesterday. Played considerable minutes as one of the main pieces off the bench for Baldwin and he hits them both. 61-45. Davis bounce pass, Rudy Morris open look, can't hit it. Offensive rebound though for Char Valley and a foul called on the rebound attempt. It's gonna go on Baldwin. Caden Cherico picks up his third. Third team foul on Baldwin, each team with three. 5.43 to go in the fourth. Good chance we're gonna see a lot of free throws the rest of the way. Slizik to Davis, guarded by Dutine in that box in one defense. Davis, can't do anything with it and goes to Slizik. Open shot, Speck passes it up. And now takes a much more contested look. Bearcat's gonna let it go out of bounds and it'll be Baldwin basketball. Yeah, it's just, Speck needs to pull up on that first one, realizes he, Baldwin's late to close out. Instead he takes the dribble and like you said, a much tougher shot inside. That timeout called by Baldwin. Two timeouts remaining for the Fighting Highlanders. Four remaining for Char Valley. 5.22 to go in the fourth, 61-45. Baldwin leads it here on the Fighting Highlanders Sports Network. Feels good to be off the sidelines, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it does. That extra effort with AHN Sports Medicine got you back here. With every specialty set, custom training day, and personalized drill, you bettered your body. Now line it up. They don't see this move coming. Told you. Go next level with AHN Sports Medicine. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. Ball and ball, and Char Valley remains with the press. Full court against Baldwin. A little bit of an abbreviated press as Baldwin breaks it easily. Bearcat drives, kicks it out. Nate Wessling wide open, will take the jumper off one dribble, and it bounces in. Took a couple of hops, but Nate Wessling gets it to fall now with 18. Yes, 
Morris to the corner. Best with it and swings it cross court. Slizik had a look, passed it up. Rudy Morris will take the shot. Rims off. Rebound to Caden Cherico. Now Max Marzina. Davis. Wesling. Why not? Take the three. Left side corner. Can't finish it. Jaden Davis rebounds. Jaden Dutine rebounds off of Davis guarding him. And the basket goes for Nate Wesling now with 20 points. Three pointer up and in. Splash sitting home. Danny Slizik shot. He's got two threes. Whistle signaling a foul called on Jackson Speck. That's his third. Max Marzino will come off and Nate Richards back on. Four twenty-two to go. Sixty-five forty-eight to score. Thirteen points for Nate Richards. Twelve for Max Marzina. Twenty for Nate Wesling. Richards to the hoop, looking for an outlet. Gets it to Dutine. Good job to grab that one, but Morris tries to steal it away, and a foul called on Rudy Morris. Loose ball up for grabs there, and Morris is the one that picks up the foul, his second. So we ball and ball out of bounds. So that was actually rather the fifth foul, the fifth team foul called on Char Valley. So it will put Jaden Davis, Jaden Dutine rather, to the line. And misses the free throw. Jaden Davis has 18 points. Danny Slizix has eight. 11 points for Rudy Morris. Foul trouble for Char Valley. Davis with three. Jackson Specht with three. Julian Semplis with four. Jaden Dutine able to hit the second. 66-48. Shot up and off from Best. It rattled around. No good. Now Richards. Nate looks and finds Barakat. Barakat's jumper. Misses and now here's Jaden Davis. Jaden Davis to the hoop. Looks for an outlet and just kind of threw it away. Loose ball on the ground. Good hustle from Caden Cherico, but will pick up a foul. And Char Valley was first to it. Both Jericho and Slizik fell to the ground. Fourth foul on Caden Jericho. Morris passes up the shot, takes a couple of dribbles, puts it up. Tough shot, but gets it to roll in. Good game from Rudy Morris today, 13 points. Richards to Nate Wessling. Wessling puts it up and scores. Taking the contact, no foul called, but Nate Wessling doesn't matter. 22 points. I mean, that's a tough shot through contact. Morris inside, gets fouled. Free throws for Rudy Morris. Morris in 19 games last year, only average. Three points per game. Shot 78% at the free throw line. And Nate Richards comes off the floor with a good ovation. Max Marzina comes on for him. Yeah, it's five for Richards, so he's done this afternoon. Nate Richards fouls out. As Rudy Morris, his first free throw is good. Caden Jericho has four. Nate Wesson with three. Jaden Dutine with three. Both three throws good for Morris. Other substitution for Baldwin. Matt Shank comes on. Gabe Barakat goes off. Sixty-eight fifty-two with three oh five to go. Fourth quarter of play. Austin Bechtel, Tyler Zeman, eat the cool hand alongside Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Baldwin trying to improve to two and zero on this season. And now one of the officials is saying to the Sharp Valley bench that one of the players is not tucking in their shirt as requested. And they're saying that they need a sub 
because it's a delay of game at the moment. So there's the referees. One of the referees right now is looking at the table and saying that Sue Julius Best has to come off the floor. Jackson Speck comes on. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Well, yeah, saying no that idea. his shirt wasn't tucked in. I've never seen that. I mean, kind of surprising that that was also in force. Looked like maybe a kickball, but it went off the leg of Danny Slizik. And we'll stay with Baldwin basketball. So Best is currently standing right at the head of the bench. And more of a discussion with Jeff Ackerman. Jeff thought it was a kickball. Under three to go, 68-52. Ball went out in front. Deflected out of bounds by Davis. Yeah, it's a tough spot for Baldwin in the corner. Need to find a way to get this in. Long pass to Nate Wessling who gets it up to Shank. Matt Shank got it knocked away. Good steal by Slizik. Danny Slizik moves with it. And got it poked away by Matt Shank, but stays with Charvalli. Morris swings it wide open three. Jackson Specht left it long. Good rebound by Jaden Davis. He gets fouled and will head to the free throw line. Davis with 18 will try to make it 20. Only two points in the fourth. Foul goes on Matt Shank. That's his third. Three subs at the scorer's table, set to check in for Char Valley. As Davis can't hit the first, rattles out. Davis' first miss. Semplitz goes off. A couple of different substitutions come on, including Kubasek, we haven't seen much of in the second half. Jake Lewis also back in, and Julius Best, who had to come off because he didn't have his shirt tucked in, comes back on. Davis, second free throw, good. Nate Wesling gets it in. Max Marzina. Now Nate Wesling. Wesling fell to the ground as he got the pass off to Marzina and now has it back up top. Right near the Baldwin bench. Baldwin can slow it down as much as they want. But Dutine goes right to the hoop, can't finish. Cherico on the follow, can't score. Second chance at it though does. Caden Cherico, toughness down low. First point since he scored the triple in the first quarter of play. Davis's three doesn't go. Rebound, Matt Shank. Strong board for Shank and now the outlet to Marzina. Max up the floor, pass to the block. Jaden Dutine open, but it looks like he traveled before the shot and that is indeed the case. Take another look at the Jaden Dutine layup. Yeah, and Jayden. Jericho just doesn't give up on it. First rebound, second rebound. Turn around and finish. Able to get his fifth on the day. Under two minutes to go. Convincing game from Baldwin, 70 to 53. Speck packs up on the three, kicks it out. Best to Davis. Guarded by Golvash back in the game. Evan Golvash, the freshman, getting some more minutes here in the fourth. Airball shot from Jackson Speck. And now Nate Wessling in transition. Goes to Marzina, but just let him too much. And Max goes all the way up the bleachers, almost to the top row. One twenty left. 17-point lead for Baldwin. And Tyler, I don't think either of us really expected this. No, I mean, this Baldwin offense just clicking right now. I mean, we saw them 10 times last season. They put up 70 or more points. And even without James Wessling, this offense is combining not just through one guy, but through multiples and still getting the same production. The three rattled in for Jaden Davis. Now with a minute to go in the game. Nate Wessling goes to Golvash. Golvash swings it over to Cherico. And Baldwin trying to just run as much clock as possible and get out of here with a victory. 
Leading it by 14. A strong game for the Fighting Highlanders here today against Char Valley, a team that has had Baldwin's number in recent years, and Max Marzina takes the layup. Max with 14 points, great performance from the sophomore guard. Jaden Davis, long range three, he splashes it in. Davis showing off his range, he's got 25. Marzina, back up top to Golvash. Caden Cherico and Baldwin will dribble it out. Matt Shank take the layup and another point in the books for Baldwin as the Fighting Highlanders win it. A convincing 74 to 59 victory for Baldwin against the Chartiers Valley Colts. An incredible performance from Baldwin to close out the tip-off tournament. The boys and girls basketball team both finish 2-0. Yeah, I mean, this is a performance that you expect from a Baldwin team. We thought it was going to be a lot closer with how good Chartiers Valley is. You got to give credit to the Highlanders. They came out slow, but they did what they had to do between three quarters of play, and that's the real difference right there. Jaden Davis finished with 25 points, Danny Slizik with eight, Rudy Morris 15. But it was the performance of Nate Wessling that led the way, 22 points of the junior guard. He's our player of the game, standing alongside Ethan Coolham. Thank you, Austin. Awesome. Here with the player of the game, Nate Wessling. Nate, from back to back, from back to back years, Jane Davis has kind of killed you guys. How are you able to contain and stop him today? Uh, we just been practicing. We've been hard in the gym every day. Uh, we took the intensity to a whole nother level, and it showed today. For back-to-back -back games, it seems like your defense is on fire. How, how have you been able to really bring the defensive pressure so far this season? Um, communication is key. We've been talking as a team. We got much better at that, and uh, yeah, like I said, it shows right now. And after a strong 2-0 start, what are the goals and expectations for this team this season? Section championship. Uh, for sure, that's, that's the goal, man. That's the main goal. Make it to the feet, and... Uh, Go undefeated, everything. I like it. I love it. Nate, thank you. Uh, great game. And Austin, back to you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ethan. Thank you to Nate Wessling. Strong performance, 22 points for Nate. And overall, Tyler, just I'm surprised yeah. by how this game went because you see so often then these two teams match up. It is close. It is tough. And right there you see it on the schedule. Mark it as a W as Baldwin will go to Thomas Jefferson next week and then be back on the home floor against Fox Chapel doubleheader night on December 8th. Friday, hoops return back in the usual time slot of 6 and 7.30. want to make, thank everybody that made this broadcast possible with us today. Nate Westling, 22 points. Jaden Dutine with 5. Gabe Barakat with 6, 7 for Matt Shank. Max Marzina, 14 points, 5 for Caden Cherico. For our entire crew, led by Jake Mislipchik and Ryan Milan, a part of ARM Video Production. For Ethan Coolhand and Tyler Zeman, I'm Austin Bechtold saying so long. We'll see you on Friday next week. Doubleheader action. Girls face Bell Vernon. The boys face off against Fox Chapel all here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network.